Hey guys, good evening from Riga, Latvia, the home to the only all Airbus 220 airline in the world. Yes, I'm talking about Air Baltic. And I know I look a bit sleepy. That's because I didn't sleep last night because I left Tbilisi, Georgia at 4 a.m., flew to Riga, where I'm at right now. And let me, this flight was full of a very interesting stories, which I'm going to tell you um, later in this video. But now I'm going to continue to Munich and I'm going to introduce their Airbus A220 to you. What's the food like? What's the seat like? What's the cabin like? What's the service? like so today it's going to be quite an interesting flight so let's do this let's go to Munich so if you've never been to Latvia or Riga I can highly recommend it a beautiful lovely little town uh, also the country is very beautiful and the airport is also pretty new easy to navigate free Wi-Fi some lovely shops and restaurants So and this is my plane today, the Airbus A220 or formerly known as the C-Series. And as I said, it's the only airline in the world that has an only A220 fleet. And uh, they used to operate like uh, Dash 8s and 737-500s. Um, but yeah, now they have 23 um, A220s only in their fleet. So I also have some very good news at the check-in counter. I was told that on today's flight there's only going to be 35 passengers. So guys, welcome on board the Airbus 220 of Baltic Air. 145 seats in total in a 3-2 configuration. Uh, there's also a business class, but there's pretty much just a block middle seat um, as well as a curtain. Um, but yeah, also up on boarding, you get a mask and some, uh, some wipes. And let me give you a quick little seat tour. There is a foldable table right here safety cord is kept here and you get a little pockets here but uh, I tried to store my phone in there but it wouldn't work this is the recline situation so you have a little bit of a recline and every time you do that it makes some uh, creaky noises so can you hear that it's a lot of plastic in this plane um, but yeah, otherwise crew was pretty lovely on this flight. And I'm going to tell you the story that happened on my, on my previous flight. It was insane, absolute insanity. Um, but yeah, also look at the seat pitch. It is pretty nice. So if I sit upright, uh, it's more than a hand. And yeah, so far, so good. So as you can see, you have those little screens here. This is where, for example, the flight map is shown. They also uh, display the safety video on there. Um, as well as offerings, what they have on their menu. So I pre-ordered a meal as well for, it was nine euro. I think it was a pretty good deal. I'm gonna show you later. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to the next two hours. So we're just being pushed up. And another very interesting fact about the Airbus uh, 220 is the size of the windows. They're actually bigger than on the 320 or the 737, for example. So better views are guaranteed.
So it's pretty bumpy right now. We're just about to reach uh, cruising altitude. Um, we're just giving uh, a menu. Um, and when I look at the prices, you can actually uh, score some really good deals when you book your flight. So for... Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I think the stabilizer of the GoPro is so good that you can't see how much we're shaking right now. It's a quite some heavy turbulences but yeah as i said like if you uh when you book your flight and you pre-book a meal and they have quite some choice and uh, i on my first flight i had the omelet uh, breakfast it was really delicious i had a lot of om omelets and usually they're dry and shit but on my first flight it was delicious and for this flight um i think i've ordered a pork dish uh so let's see what this is going to be like but if you're not sure whether you want to book a fly a meal or not, when you book your flight, there's still a chance to purchase a meal, as well as good duty-free items uh, on board. So here we go. I've just received uh, my uh, pre-ordered meal, it's a uh, pork dish with uh, potatoes and beans and asparagus, uh, a little dessert, some bread, cutlery, some butter, and a canned orange juice. How cute is that? Uh, yeah, so on my previous flight from uh, Tbilisi to Riga, I had a brekkie and it was amazing. It was really good in terms of quality. So let's see uh, how this one is going to perform. And um, now let me answer one of the most asked questions. Uh, you guys always ask me why are some airlines serving food and why are some airlines not doing so? For an airline like Air Baltic, Wizz Air, Ryanair, sales on board are their bread and butter. This is how they generate income. For the airlines, it's not about safety or they don't care about these kind of things. For Lufthansa, for example, is they struggle. So they want to save money. So instead of serving a full meal, they offer you snacks, which are way cheaper. And in times like this, it's okay. If this helps Lufthansa to survive or any other uh, like a legacy carrier, I'm fine with it. But don't do it in the name of Corona, you know? Communicate it as such. Tell them that you are struggling and that you need to cut corners somewhere. And it's the same for Wizz Air, Ryanair, you know, all the budget airlines. They depend on their sales. They need every euro. Uh, and this is why you will have uh, the possibility of purchasing meals on board. And this is as simple as it works. It's a money game. It's a surviving game. And so they have to do what keeps them flying. Uh, it's not in the name of Corona. It's not like that, they, that they're scared or they don't care about this. They care about surviving. So I hope I was able to answer the question. And now I'm gonna dig in and see what this dish tastes like. So I also can tell you that this pork it's very juicy, very rich in flavors. It's like actually really quality catering. As well as asparagus. Very lovely, very flavor intense, uh, out of good quality. So they're definitely not saving money when it comes to uh, uh, their catering. Uh, very well spent nine euros, I'd say. So for all of you who always give me shit in the comment section that I don't eat my greens. But for such a tiny carrier, uh, it's definitely a quality catering. Uh, that's for sure. Like those nine euros are well spent. So. I, if you have the chance and you feel like that you might be hungry on the flight, go for it. I can strongly recommend it. So now guys, get ready for the Louvre review, which I also believe is probably the very first on an Airbus A220. Dude, and after the Louvre review, I gotta tell you the shocking story about what has happened on my first flight from Tbilisi uh, to Riga. Something you won't believe. I was lucky enough to film it with my phone. So, welcome to the Louvre review. 
on the Airbus 220. And the first thing I gotta tell you, this loo is way more spacious than any loo of the 320 or the 737. And look at this, nursing table here uh, for families. There might be families who watch my blog. Always good uh, to, to change the nappies. And there is, there is an ashtray here. I don't know why. I mean, you can't smoke on a on a plane, but maybe some of you guys can explain it to me. Got uh, some amenities: liquid soap, hand sanitizer, cute little sink. So, uh, what do you guys think? Did the 220 pass the uh, the loo review or not? I think it did. It's spacious. It's clean. It's lovely and uh, it's bright. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my seat and then I'm gonna tell you the story you guys are all waiting for. What has happened on my flight from Tbilisi to Riga? So I was sitting at the very same seat. Boarding was almost completed. Four people came in and I think there was an issue that they were denied entry into the country because the crew was holding on to their passport. Since I was once detained in China, I know very well how that worked. There was a drunk guy right in the row in front of he was passed out he was lying down there and those four people approached the crew and said well this guy is lying on our seats and the crew responded with well go find some other seats then <laughs> so i was like what the that is uh <laughs> pretty cool response like a terrible response of course the guy was still lying there and we were like taxiing for the runway the crew carried out their uh, uh, safety check for takeoff she walked past she saw him seat belt wasn't fast he was just lying there he could have easily fall off she looked at him for a second and she was like no i'm not going to deal with this so we took off he was just lying there like almost like a dead body like imagine he would have aborted the takeoff or he would have fallen off i don't know which responsibility it would have been like i think ability would have been with air baltic uh, the crew didn't carry out uh, their duty I'm trying to point this out and that's why i'm so outspoken because uh, those little things really make a difference in case it, uh, there's a like emergency situation i'm always trying to hold the airlines responsible for these kind of things so yeah it was like day and night because on this flight the crew is uh, wonderful uh, they're lovely they're very uh, uh, anal about safety they're really like carrying out their duty the way they should the flight before the crew absolutely didn't give a shit about anything i know it was a 4 30 a.m flight and nobody likes to take them but that's your job you guys when you get angry with me you cabin crew guys i know there's you guys are amazing i love you and then sometimes you say if, if i complain about the service you always say oh we're there for your safety so then this is where you can uh, shine and that's all i wanted to say That was a pretty rough landing. Um, other than that, summarize my flight. It was like day and night. The first flight, a complete disaster. The second flight was absolutely lovely and they showed what they're capable of. And I think this is how I want to end this, this vlog. Air Baltic is full of surprises. I did enjoy it, uh, especially this last flight uh, where the crew was performing exceptionally well. And uh, I hope uh, that the Tbilisi flight was a rare accident that doesn't happen again. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of uh, today's video. And uh, yeah, and if you want, uh, check out my Patreon page where you can support me uh, with the ever-changing algorithm and times of Corona. It's uh, really tough to make a living on YouTube, so I would appreciate your support. Guys, wherever you're off to, have a safe trip and thanks so much for watching.